If a true heading of 135 degrees results in a ground track of 130 degrees, and a true airspeed of 135 knots results in a ground speed of 140 knots, the wind would be from A. 19 degrees and 12 knots, B. 200 degrees and 13 knots, or C. 246 degrees and 13 knots. <sighs> I don't know, just leave me alone. If this type of question requires higher levels of your motivation, you're not alone. Understanding wind calculations can creep up on us during a pilot written test or flight planning. And to do that, we will also need to use a flight computer called the E6B. You may have already seen at least one of the two common forms of the E6B flight computer. There is the analog manual version and the battery powered electronic version. These specific models of the manual and electronic flight computers are the only two forms of the computer that are approved to bring and use during your written test. To stick to the theme of written test preparation and practice, we will demonstrate using only these two forms of the flight calculator, even though there are other neat flight computer apps and gadgets available out there. Those would not be allowed in the testing room. We will start with solving this question using the manual E6B computer method, and then I will show the electronic computer method after. No matter if you have the paper version or the more durable metal version, they basically operate the same. A subtle difference depending on the brand, some may simply have more graphing lines on them. I will demonstrate what I mean by that. Mm, speaking of more durable, how on earth did I still manage to bend this? Anyways, this is the side of the manual calculators that are used for making the wind calculations. When using these to solve this type of question, check to see which brand of E6B you have. If you have the ASA one, you will see that the slide on one side will have an ASA logo up at the top, along with some formulas and such, while on the other side, we have this graph for wind calculations. So you will use this side with working with this practice question. This can look obvious enough. If, however, you happen to have the other popular brand of E6Bs by Jepson, their E6B comes with a slide that has a wind graph on both sides of this slide. If you pull it all the way out, you will see how on one side has numbers ranging from about 30 to 260, while on the other side has about 150 to 650. This side is for higher speed ranges that are beyond the red line for most training aircraft. So instead, for these kinds of questions, make sure you are using the side with a lower wind scale from 30 to 260. For the sake of this video, I will demonstrate on this paper version since I think there is better contrast to see more clearly what I'm doing on here. Going back to this question now, we are given the following information of a true heading of 135 degrees, ground track of 130 degrees, true air speed 135 knots, and lastly, ground speed is 140 knots. Basically, we'll be taking all this provided information and applying it to the calculator in the following order. This listed order is important, so feel free to screenshot this or write it down so you will remember it for later. Now, regardless of which brand E6B you have, we will need to set our given ground track under the true index. This is what it will look like. You'll notice up here on the outer black band that doesn't rotate, we have the true index. That is where we will want to line up our ground track under by rotating this dial. We were provided a ground track of 130 degrees, so that's all there is to it. Step number two, we will slide this entire piece up or down. This time, we will be paying attention to the center of the dial or that hole you may sometimes hear this thing being called a grommet. Line up the grommet to be positioned directly on top of the appropriate number in the center line on the wind graph slide. The number we are seeking on here will be our given ground speed, in this case, 140 knots. Be careful to be as precise as possible. Ideally, you'll want to peek inside that grommet and see a cross or a plus sign, and that way you'll know you're doing great. 
Once we have that done, next step is to find our wind correction angle. This was not directly provided to us in the question, but all it takes is finding the difference between the true heading and ground track. In this case, it would be the difference between 135 and 130 degrees. That gives us a crosswind correction of 5 degrees. In addition to that, we also need to know, is this a left or right crosswind correction? Take a look once again at what we are looking at here. We have a ground track of 130 degrees, the path the aircraft actually takes above the ground, while its true heading is 135 degrees. You may remember from flight lessons, we point into the wind, sometimes called crabbing. With any discrepancy between ground track and true heading, this is what's happening. It is easy to visually observe this right on this azimuth or compass rose, if you will. Take a look at this here. 130 degrees is right here. And from there, where is our true heading? We have 135 degrees true heading on the right side, meaning that we have a crosswind coming at us from the right because we point into the wind. You will always see bigger numbers on the right side, smaller numbers on the left side, no matter your position on the azimuth circle. So with that five degree crosswind correction from the right side, we will be looking for the five degree vertical line on the right side from the center line here. Each one of these fine lines going vertically represent a single degree increment. There's our five degree line. Keeping note of that, we will want to intersect that line with a horizontal line representing our given true airspeed, which in this case, we have 135 knots. Each one of these fine horizontal lines represent a two degree increment. So it looks like our 135 line would be right here, right in the middle. So we selected both vertical crosswind correction line and the horizontal true airspeed line. Where these lines intersect is what is important to us. We will want to make a precise dot to mark the point where these lines intersect. Look here, their user guide claims that the transparent portion is frosted so it can be written on with a pencil. Pfft, that's lousy performance. I don't like this. It may be easier to use a fine tip whiteboard marker, or I also found a gel pen that works better for this too. Sure, a soft pencil is acceptable too. Just take care in not scratching the plastic surface. Use whatever you want to make a small precise dot that is visible enough and preferably not permanent. Once you have marked the spot, congratulations, it's all easier from here. Now, all we have to do is rotate the dial until our marked dot lines up perfectly on the center line, which also happens to align with the true index up at the top. This is where we will read our answers to the question. For our wind direction in the answer, we will read the number lined up under the true index after that rotation we had just made. For me, it looks like I got around 246 degrees. And finally, to get our wind speed, we will count up from zero, which would be represented from our grommet or the center hole. That will be our zero mark. Don't let yourself be confused or distracted from the 140 and the rest of the numbers we see here below. We are looking at the grommet as our new starting point, the zero mark. Again, with every horizontal line here, they represent a two knot increment. There's 10 knots, and then it looks like about just sitting on top of the 12 knot line. So I will say about 12 or 13 knots, depending on how large I happen to draw my mark or my dot. This is why it's helpful to make our marks as small and precise as possible. As we can see from our given answer options, the wind speeds are 12 and the last two being 13 knots. The options are pretty close to each other, not giving much room for error. However, in this case, we are also given a large difference in wind directions, 
we can easily use the process of elimination to remove answer A, definitely being way out of line here. My best and closest answer would be C, 246 degrees and 13 knots. This is selected as the correct answer. I am not good at memorizing multiple steps, but a quick way to summarize this wind calculation process, we begin from top center, then downwards to the center, with ground track and ground speed. Notice how both of these items of information begin with the word ground. Then, the rest of the steps involve wind or air, determining left or right side crosswind, which was already explained earlier, and crossing it with our true airspeed. And to come in full circle, we line everything back up right on the center line, and our answers will be read from top center, then downwards to the center. But reading between fine lines and squishing our pens and pencils onto this slick surface? I just don't have that kind of patience for this. Let's check out what that electronic E6B is all about. This particular model I have is from the popular Sporties Pilot Shop, but by now there's a newer model of this calculator, but overall function is consistent with this older one. The newer one has slight different aesthetic design and few minor additional features like the backlit screen, which I think could be nice if you want to use during night flight, but the fundamentals haven't changed. If considering an electronic flight computer for your written test practice, make sure you see that it is specifically advertised or confirmed that it is approved to use for the written test. For example, ASA also has their testing approved version of the electronic flight computer as well. So back to the second method of solving this same question. Are you ready? Simply turning on the calculator brings up a selection of functions near the bottom of the screen. Navigate around with the arrow keys to make the function you want to use to make it blinking. I believe the newer model of this calculator has you first select a category with a different button, then scrolling up and down with the arrow keys. Overall, it will probably be manageable to figure out. We will want to use the wind function, and once we have that blinking, hit enter. Then the calculator will prompt us to enter our information one by one. Here it asks us for course. Well, if we look back at our question, there is no piece of given information that is labeled course, but this is simply an instance of aviation terminology having more than one word for the same thing. In this case, the calculator is asking for the ground track as the course, which we have 130 degrees. Type in 130, then hit the enter button. Next, it asks for our given true airspeed. We will type in 135 and press enter. Next, it wants our ground speed. Type in 140, press enter. Now, it wants our heading, as in our true heading given in our question. 135, press enter. And then, up at the top, it gives us a wind direction of 245.1 and a speed of 13 knots. This also brings us to choosing the best answer option of answer C. And there we have it! Now you have the power, the wisdom, to make unknown winds into known winds! Hope you were blown away by what you can do with your E6B! Bye!